Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. We're continuing our discussion on heart physiology. This is video I, in which I focus on the EKG or ECG, whichever you prefer. More than likely, all of us at some point in time are going to be needing an ECG or EKG, which literally stands for electro cardiogram, a graphical representation of the electrical activities in the heart. Now, why do we sometimes call it an EKG? Because in uh, other languages, for instance, German, it's uh, spelled with a K, electrocardiogram, so that cardio is spelled with a K. And very often you'll hear me call it EKG. Keep in mind that an EKG is a representation of the electrical activities, not the physical contractions of the heart. This is so important for you to remember. This definition seems easy. It's very often missed on exams when I uh, rephrase the definition of an EKG. So be sure you understand what we're talking about here. Now, an EKG is made up of these different waves. We referred to as deflection waves. And we'll focus on just the three major ones. There are additional ones, and there might come a time where you take a course where you really specialize in studying EKGs. That's a little bit beyond the scope of this class. So we have the P wave, the QRS complex, and the T wave. Let's take a look at these. So here we see uh, an EKG of a healthy individual with the deflection waves. And notice that they keep repeating over and over again, just like our heart rate, or heartbeat, I should say, keeps occurring and re reoccurring. An EKG is not showing your heartbeat. It's showing the electrical activities, which then lead to heartbeats. Let's specify what, what each one of these deflection waves reflects. So the P wave is a reflection of depolarization of the atria. This QRS complex looks very complex because it's the depolarization of the ventricles. And considering that the ventricles have different sized walls, we see that um, this QRS complex is, is uh, pretty complex looking. During the depolarization of the ventricles, we can also assume that repolarization of the atria is occurring here. Now, we're not seeing that in the QRS complex, but this is the time when repolarization of the atria is occurring as well. Finally, the, the T wave represents the repolarization of the ventricles. So once again, the P wave, depolarization of atria, QRS, depolarization of ventricles within the background, completely covered up with the QRS complex because it is so complex, uh, the repolarization of the atria, and then the T wave, the repolarization of the ventricles. Again, an EKG is not illustrating when the atria versus the ventricles contract. But we can deduce from an EKG when the atria and the ventricles contract. So before we relate the contraction phases of the heart to the EKG, let's go over this illustration which relates the, the flow of depolarization in the intrinsic conduction system to our EKG. And by the way, there are great YouTube videos that illustrate uh, EKGs really well as well. So if we start here with number one, when um, the heart is basically at rest for a moment, we're going to, it, in number two, see depolarization occurring at the SA node, which is leading to depolarization of both atria, and that's represented here as our P wave. When the depolarization reaches the AV node, right about here, 
we might see the transition from the P wave into the QRS complex. So that's that little interval here inter in between the P and the QRS complex. We see a little bit of a delay there, remember, because all of the depolarization waves have to be collected at that AV node. Then via the bundle of His and the bundle branches and Purkinje fibers, we can finally see that slowly but surely the ventricles begin to depolarize and that results in our QRS complex. While the, the ventricles depolarize, remember we can assume that the atria are repolarizing. Is this showing inside of this QRS complex graph or wave? No, we just make that assumption. As ventricular depolarization starts to wrap up, we then start to transition into our ventricular repolarization and that's where the T wave is represented in our EKG. Now that we have a good understanding of all the electrical events that occur in the heart, the microscopic anatomy, the difference between the contractile cells and the pacemaker cells, we can take a look at the different phases that occur when the heart is physically contracting. And then once we have that down, we can go back to the electrical events and put them all together.